Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited that you are here. Um, hopefully, we're not going to have any tech issues. I had a few tech issues on the front side. Um, and I know that um, Facebook, for some reason, has been being a little contrary with live video lately. Um, so last week when we went live, it didn't go live on Facebook. So hopefully, we are good to go um, and we won't have any issues today. Uh, today, you guys, I'm super excited. I know last week we talked about Reels too. Uh, Reels is so where it's at. I was reading an article this morning about, um, you know, how people were consuming content. And I don't know if you guys are uh, super up on what's happening with the whole iOS update and how it's impacting ads. Um, but this article was talking about the fact that uh, short form videos are going to be a great opportunity now for those of us who are maybe going to struggle with paid ads because, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's uh, like when I was last time I saw a, a recent update on the new iOS update, like 96% of uh, iOS users are opting out of ads. So, okay, so that means we're going to have to start going back to doing the work. <laughs> you know, we can't even pay to get in front of the right people anymore. So uh, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do the work. So short form videos, specifically reels are really exciting me. And I have amazing guest again today for you guys, um, who's doing incredible things with Instagram reels and has been um, for a while, got started with TikTok, uh, done some amazing things with TikTok, and then he's transitioned that over to reels. So I'm super excited about having him here. I'll, I'll bring him on in just a minute. Just want to do a couple of quick little um, housekeeping things. Um, if you are uh, just coming in, I see we have, uh, we have some that you guys, I didn't even ask today and you just know the gig, you know, right? So, Hey, Christina, um, Christina is coming in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, uh, Chuck is here from Charlottesville. Hey Chuck, I hope you had a great weekend. Christina, I hope you had a great, um, Mother's Day, um, I usually ask, where in the world are you? I forgot to ask that this morning. So um, if you want to drop it in, just go ahead, drop it in. I'd love to see where everybody is. If you're watching on the replay, if you'll just type in, um, you know, hashtag replay so I can, you know, catch up with you later. Um, and uh, very quickly, uh, we love the love around here. So if you want to share some emojis, we would love that. We're also doing a giveaway. We do giveaways every show. And today, because we're doing Instagram, it just seemed appropriate that we would do one of the DM mugs. So we've got uh, two of these uh, so like if you're live, unfortunately, I don't have a DM mug myself. Can you believe that? Like it is one of my designs and I don't currently have one. I've got to order myself one. But if you're live and you want somebody to DM, you just hold up your little mug and say DM me, right? Um, so the DM mugs, I think are going to be super popular in the whole context with Instagram Reels. Um, so two of those will be given away today. And how do you win? We do have a, we have to pick winners and we do have a little system for picking the winners. If you will share, oh, I do it every time. I never get my finger right. Share the aha moments uh, with us. Uh, we would love that, uh, which is just like, hey, if you hear something that's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Just type in aha and what your aha moment is to let us know what it is. And uh, if you hear something that you knew, but you needed to hear it again, uh, drop those in. We put you in the will of the win. I don't know. Is that is that even something? Anyway, we put you in uh, and, and ultimately we spin the wheel and we choose our winners at the end of the show. So definitely be here. That's our ethical bribe to keep you guys tuned in until the end. OK, just being totally transparent. Um, I want to give a, a real quick shout out to today's sponsor. I'm super excited about working with this particular brand. Not only do they have an amazing tool, um, our sponsor is Restream. And I've been using this, it's kind of my new go-to platform for live streaming to multiple social media channels at the same time. Like right now, for example, we're live on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, a couple of Facebook groups. Um, and it's been super easy um, to use. It's a great interface for doing like cool transitions, 
pulling in viewers, uh, comments, and adding customized text to the screen. You can also host up to nine guests at a time. Now, I usually just do the one, you know, one guest, but, you know, if you wanted to do like a Brady Bunch style um, show, you could absolutely do that. You can also brand your live shows with custom show overlays, your logo, and even pull in custom graphics and videos. They just added the ability to use animated backgrounds and background music as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the best platforms for new and experienced creators alike. And this is one of the reasons I really love them. When I work with a brand, usually they'll give me a discount to give to my people, but it's limited. It's like you get a little bit of discount for the first month. But they have given um, uh, me a wonderful opportunity to share with you, which is a 25% for life discount. So if you go to kimgurst.com forward slash restream, use the kimgurst25 discount you can get a discount off of this amazing tool for life. So that's a pretty a nifty discount for sure. All right. So all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, let me tell you about our guest today. Like I said, I'm super excited to have Brock with us. Um, Brock is just 24 years old, y'all. So I won't even say like I have kids that are older. Okay, I said it. But um, he is 24 years old. He's a former college athlete with a passion for helping others grow their following and businesses specifically on Instagram. So he's been super smart, niched himself down to a, a singular platform but doesn't mean he's only using that platform, hint, hint. Um, as co-host of the Build Your Tribe po uh, podcast, instructor of multiple online courses, viral TikTok creator, and a formal, former college athlete, um, Brock has helped thousands of entrepreneurs learn to build their businesses, even with limited time and money. And I think that's super uh, powerful to think it through in that context because he's young, but he didn't let that stop him. He didn't have a lot of funds. He didn't let that stop him. He didn't have a lot of time. He didn't let that stop him. Okay, is anybody feeling sad in, about themselves at this moment? Don't feel sad. Just get up and get after it, right? So, hey, Brock, I'm super excited you're here. Yay. Thanks for being here. Of course. Thank you so much. So excited to be here. Yeah, this is, um, like I said, we talked just a minute beforehand. And, um, you know, one of my biggest things was always, like, if I'm going to do this, like, I usually try to learn as, you know, as much as I can before I, and I would say there's a lot of people that are going to either watch with us live today or watch or on the replay or listen later. Mm -hmm. And I bet they're probably like, yeah, what is this real thing? Like, so can you explain like, what is, what is Instagram reels in a nutshell? Sure. Absolutely. So every social media ultimately is just copying each other. They're taking the best pieces from some new platform, whether it be Clubhouse in 2021 or TikTok in 2022, and they're copying it and putting it on their own platform. That's exactly what Instagram Reels is. Instagram Reels is Instagram's version of TikTok. So in 2020 and 2019, TikTok exploded in popularity. It shot to the top of the charts and it took over the market of these short form videos it became super popular and super catchy and people were spending hours a day on this brand new app, TikTok. And that's where Instagram Reels came from. Instagram copied TikTok to recreate what Instagram Reels are, which are basically 30 second. Uh, they're up to 30 seconds, so they can be less than that. They can be six, seven seconds, but up to 30 second long looping video. So as soon as the video ends, it goes back to the beginning and it repeats. So it's a repeating video. And when you post one on Instagram, it lives on your Instagram feed. I love your explanation of that because, you know, especially in the context of a, a copycat, like, you know, we're going back to Snapchat, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, does, I mean, I guess people are still using Snapchat, but it's kind of like, you know, Snapchat came along and Instagram flexed their bigger mm -hmm. muscle maybe. And mm -hmm. they implemented a lot of the Snapchat functionality and then TikTok came along and here we are, you know, and now you've got stories on all the social platforms. So mm -hmm. the, the bigger message to me on all of that, and I'd love your take on this, is that the, the platforms are not necessarily copying the other platforms for the sake of copying them. Mm -hmm. They're copying the other platforms because they figured out something that the end user wants and is consuming. Yeah. 
So do you agree like this? Is it like, hey, I'm not going to build a whole new like stories on LinkedIn, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, And but they had to. Why? Because Mm -hmm. because it's working. I think you're absolutely spot on. You're absolutely right. That's why. And it was kind of funny to watch how every single platform came out with their own version of stories after Snapchat got, uh, got popular from their Snapchat stories. And Instagram stories, LinkedIn stories, YouTube, Facebook, every platform now has stories. Match.com even has stories now. But now, of course, I think every platform is going to take their shot at TikToks or Reels. Uh, YouTube has YouTube shorts. Snapchat came out with their own version of these short form videos. They're not copying it just because uh, it's new and it's trending. They're copying it because it's proving itself to work. It's proving to keep people on the platform for longer and every platform knows that they have their their user base. YouTube knows that it has a certain amount of people who are on YouTube. Instagram knows it has a certain amount of users who are always going to be on Instagram. So they want to provide those people with the opportunity to also use and capitalize on this very powerful new medium of short form videos. Yeah, you know, it was really interesting to me when uh, YouTube, which has traditionally been a landscape format, Mm -hmm. and yeah, you can upload shorter videos, but nobody does. Like, right? It's like a long form video content platform. Mm -hmm. It has always been that Um, until they rolled out uh, YouTube Shorts. And, you know, that was a big aha because one, it's it's a, a short form video. You can't upload massive videos in that format. And it's vertical, which again is a teller. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, uh, all these platforms. And so, so the massive moral to this is y'all need to lean in. I'm telling you because, and that's why I'm here. I'm committing to, uh, to doing this too, because, it is it is way people are consuming content today. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because time is limited these days. We don't necessarily want to dig into more unless we're interested, right? Mm-hmm. So um, what I know you started out with TikTok uh, mm-hmm. and you had a lot of success with TikTok. How would you compare the two and what do you, which one are you more passionate about right now? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a great question. I've always been, I've always considered myself an Instagram expert for years. I've been teaching about Instagram, but then early on in 2019, I saw this new app that was trending TikTok. And I saw at the time it was mobile know it for today, which is dancing videos. And I was like, Hey, this is kind of fun. It's kind of goofy. Maybe I'll post a few. And by my fourth video on TikTok, I had like 8 million views and suddenly I had 300,000 new followers. So I was shocked at how viral I went and it was really unexpected and unplanned, but I had built a following and a platform on TikTok that wasn't centered around my niche. And without getting too into the the discussion of niche, my TikTok following doesn't want Instagram marketing advice. They don't want business entrepreneurship tips. My, My TikTok following, they just want dancing videos for me. They want me to be goofy. They want me to still be a college football player, which I was three years ago. That's what they want from me. So they don't expect what my Instagram audience expects from me. And that's why I was actually really happy when Instagram released Instagram Reels because now it was an opportunity for me to marry my expertise, which is Instagram marketing, with what I had learned to do and what I love to do, which was making these short form looping videos on TikTok. So once Instagram Reels came out, which uh, they debuted in August of 2020, I hopped right on the bandwagon and I've had plenty of success. And I think that's my uh, favorite piece of Reels or TikTok, whether it be Reels or TikTok. It's the piece that they can go viral. And I think that's the most attractive piece. And it should be the most attractive piece uh, for any marketer or business owner. Before we started today, you said how challenging it can be, even when we're paying for advertisements to get in front of the right audience, to actually get our content seen. That's the beauty of content like TikToks and Instagram Reels is that they have the potential to reach not just thousands, but hundreds of thousands or even millions of people without having to spend a dime. Yes. So good. So good. And, you know, one of the
think we might have lost Kim here, but I'll keep talking about Instagram Reels. Um, just wanted to let everyone know uh, they can be very scary at first. I understand that. Um, it might be a totally new thing. If you don't know a thing about Instagram Reels, if you've never posted one, you've never edited one before, you don't know how it works, I encourage you to just poke around on YouTube. There are plenty of great short tutorials that will teach you the basics of how to create and edit your Instagram Reels. And, and you'll learn that they're actually very easy to produce at first, just like anything. They're foreign, they're new, they're scary, uh, they're, they're hard to figure out, they're hard to understand, but just like everything else with practice and with time, it becomes a lot more familiar. And actually what I found is that Instagram Reels are the quickest kind of content for me to produce. Besides something maybe like an Instagram story, which is literally just a, a documentation of my day, uh, Instagram Reels are the only form of lasting content that are super easy and quick to produce. YouTube videos take a lot of time. Live videos and podcasts and things like that, they, they, they take time in editing. Um, even normal Instagram feed posts, those things take time writing captions and um, editing copy and things like that. But Instagram Reels can be very, very quick and easy to edit and produce. And I think that's a, a huge win um, for entrepreneurs and for business owners is because you don't have to spend hours and hours slaving over this piece of content. You can spend a couple minutes creating an Instagram reel and have arguably far greater potential reach, far greater uh, potential audience growth from a video that, that took you a lot less time to create. So um, I can't argue enough for why reels are so powerful. I mean, they have such a huge upside, such a small downside. I understand that they might not be uh, possible or, or doable or they might not fit for every single industry and every single business, not every business has a face to it, but um, I would actually push back on that and say that you could make them work for just about every industry. I've yet to hear of a business, hear, hear of a profession, hear of an industry uh, where reels wouldn't work or they wouldn't be successful. Even if you can't put your face on camera, let's say your business doesn't have a face to the brand, um, you, it's still possible to, to create Instagram reels, create successful Instagram reels, and even go viral with Instagram reels. Okay, you gotta love live video. Of course, it is, you know, live. <laughs> it is live. There is always something going on. I don't understand why it is giving me fits today, but it is what it is. Thank you. I know you probably did an amazing job. Rhonda was texting me. She's like, he is so covering down. I'm like, <laughs> I knew he could. <laughs> So I don't know what I missed, but we're I just went over. I was basically just going over with everyone um, the how reels are so easy to produce and how at first they can be such a challenge and such a such a difficulty because it's new, it's foreign, just like anything else. You know, yeah. think about our first time going live or our first ever YouTube video. These things were daunting, huge challenges. So I just kind of encouraged everyone to, uh, you know, pop over on YouTube look up some quick mini tutorials on how to use Reels so you can kind of get the basics down and then you're good to go. And then kind of the, the summation of my argument was that um, they're super quick and easy to produce. And once you learn yes. how to do them, I think, I mean, I, I can't think of a kind of content that's easier to make than Instagram Reels. I made one this morning in about six minutes, right yeah. before we started this live. Well, you know, what I think is interesting is, you know, a long form video is hard. I mean, it's when you have to, it, you know, especially if it's going to be YouTube focused, right? But th the other thing that I find interesting with uh, Reels, I've been like, I'm addicted now. I, I had to delete TikTok off my phone because I was spending mm. too much time like looking at ya. it. I hear you. So, um, and I feel like I'm getting there with Reels. But, but you can save like an audio and just... Mm like somebody created some amazing, like, like I thought great, like strategies or tips or like a, an inspirational thing or whatever you can, you can save that audio and lip sync to it. Like mm -hmm. you don't get any easier than that. I think there's so many ways to repurpose and, or no remix. That's the word remix, uh, the content over on, um, uh, with Instagram reels. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, 
going back to the repurpose piece, and I know you just talked about and encouraging people to like, it's, it's easy to do, but from a repurposing perspective and leveraging these, like you make a reel that's 30 seconds, how can you use that in other places? Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty, of course, of all of these platforms, like we talked about earlier, kind of creating their own versions of each other is now you can create one form or one piece of content and it can be shared on all these other platforms. And it's meant for those platforms. It's strange. It's foreign if we're taking something like an Instagram story and trying to share that on YouTube, right? We're going from vertical to horizontal. We're going from something that's meant to be 24 hours and then expire like a story. And we're putting it on something like YouTube that's evergreen and lives forever. It doesn't quite match up. But whether you're posting a TikTok, a reel, a YouTube short, um, Twitter now has their own version, uh, Snapchat now has their own version, whether you're posting any of these kinds of content, it's all the exact same kind of content at the end of the day. People are have the, they have the same expectations um, at the end of the day. So you can create content on your Instagram Reels and that can also be shared as a TikTok. It can also be shared as a YouTube short. I do this all the time and I think it's really fascinating. Sometimes you'll make a video on Instagram Reels and it will do all right for you. And then you'll post it on YouTube Shorts and it'll do all right for you. And then you'll post it on TikTok and it'll do really well. It'll pick up a lot more views and get you a lot more followers. Well, that's awesome. Now you only had to create one piece of content. It was shared in three different places. And then one of the three, it really did well and it helped you grow your following. And so I think it's a really powerful way to um, create more content, serve more people, but ultimately create less work for yourself. Yeah. And I think that's the key. Like, you know, we, we, I think we, we're a little bit lazy sometimes, sometimes, not, not always, but in the context of the fact that there's so many things to do these days and there's so many social media platforms and there's so many things that, you know, the, the so many, right. Yeah. So, you know, shortening it up, if we understand that people are wanting shorter content, not a bunch of longer stuff. Um, and then, you know, really stepping into, uh, creating that. So I asked this question of Ray last week, and I think a lot of people are concerned about it uh, in the context of, you know, they go and they look at reels and they're like, I can't do that. Like, you know, I'm not going to dance or I'm not entertaining or I'm not funny. So can, do you have to be that in order to leverage reels or TikTok or shorts? I think shorts maybe is a little bit more. Mm -hmm could be more. It's a little different feel over there. But I'm just curious about Reels and TikTok in particular. What's your take on it? And what have you seen work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to be successful on Reels or on TikTok, absolutely. You should have a background in dance. You should know choreography. You should probably have a six pack and you should also probably be six foot three and gorgeous. I'm totally kidding. That's absolutely not the case. And in fact, I don't think you have to do one step of dance or choreography. You don't even have to lip sync if you don't want to. The power of these videos is not uh, that people are dancing. It's not that uh, you have to be a great singer or anything like that. The power of these videos is that they're short. They grab our attention. By their very nature, they're captivating and they're entertaining. They're short, they're looping. They're, they're gonna grab people's attention. They're gonna make sure people are watching. That's just the power of how these uh, kinds of content are currently working. And so that's awesome for you because now you as a content creator, you don't have to put as much stress on grabbing people's attention. You don't have to put as much emphasis on being the most uh, extravagant, eccentric dancer and lip syncing and being beautiful and amazing. You don't have to worry as much about that because these kinds of content are going to grab people's attention for you. And now you, as the content creator, you can focus a lot more on creating real value for your audience. And that's ultimately what I would recommend is you don't have to dance. You don't have to sing. You don't have to lip sync. You don't have to be goofy and, and be extravagant. Just provide value. And ultimately, for most of us, the easiest way to provide value is through education. So just get on TikTok, get on Instagram Reels and create a less than 30 second video that shares some education, share some top three tips or your two favorite resources or the biggest lesson learned or give people a 20 second crash course in whatever it is that you are an expert in. And you'll be shocked at how positively people respond to this amount of value in such a short window. 
I love, love, love everything you just said. And I, I want to circle back to something you said before, where you talked about your community over on TikTok and, you know, you embraced that, that platform early on, but the way the content you created there was different Mm -hmm. and you also attracted a different audience there, right? So, you know, if you show up on reels and I'll just give you my personal opinion on this, everybody out there, I haven't done this yet, so I can't even say it from a place of, of, of experience, but I think that what I'm saying is going to be right, but I love your take on this, um, Brock, is if you are showing up and you're doing content or sharing content that is not in alignment with the way you have already shown up on social media, mm-hmm. and you're just trying to be like everybody else, you're going to attract the wrong crowd. You're not going to attract your person. Like if you're just going to do, like, I love it too, by the way, I love Shanti's like, you know, dance thing. If you've been on reels, y'all know what I'm talking about. Cause you've mm-hmm. probably seen it, but if you haven't, and then I've Brock does a, incredible, all the things he said about the choreography and the dance and the six pack and the six, three, he's got it. But, um, but if we don't like, and it's in alignment though, with him, with his brand. And so he's managed to marry that with, um, showcasing his knowledge on Instagram and, and through the marriage of those two things, he's been able to, you know, shine there. So my, my point is, I know I said a lot there, um, is to, show up and be yourself. If you're not like a, like, you know, into the dancing and all the, that kind of stuff, then just showcase your knowledge in a way that's authentic to you. Mm -hmm. Is that, do you think the authenticity is super important in this context? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And unfortunately I've seen the flip side of this happen quite a few times. And let me walk everyone through this scenario really quickly, how it would go. So if you are not used to producing let's say, let's call it like funny dancing content. That's not what you're known for. But you had this funny idea for a video or maybe you learned some choreography or you felt really motivated one day. You had three cups of coffee and you learned some dance routine. And then you posted that on your Instagram reels. One of two things is going to happen. Either, number one, it's going to flop. It's not going to do well. Your audience is going to be like, what? This is out of the blue, this doesn't feel authentic to her. This this doesn't feel like what I know her for. Like this is just, you know, I'm, that's not what I signed up for. And they might unfollow or more than likely, they're just gonna ignore the content. They're not gonna engage with it. And that's gonna hurt you in the algorithm. That's That's not the best case scenario. The other thing that can happen is actually worse, and it's gonna sound weird to say this, but it's that the content does well. It's that that weird, uh, the thing that is is abnormal for your normal, posting, it's the thing that doesn't quite fit in with the rest of your niche, that goes viral. Then you get a bunch of followers who are following you for the wrong reasons. And I can give you a personal anecdote to this. When I first started on Instagram Reels, I took some of those really popular old TikTok videos that I had and I just shared them on Reels because I was like, hey, this is easy. I'm just going to repurpose some of my old dancing TikToks onto my Instagram platform, which was known for educational, valuable content. And some of those reels went viral. But the unfortunate thing is suddenly I saw a spike in followers. I went up by like 4,000 followers in a couple of days. And then a couple of days later, all of those people unfollowed me because those weren't my target client. Those weren't my ideal follower. They were following me for just dancing content. And then once they saw, hey, this guy's posting about marketing advice and Instagram tips, that's that's not what I signed up for. I thought he was just the dancing guy. So they all unfollowed. So either way, it's a lose-lose situation. Um, so that's why I recommend with all of your reels or all of your TikToks or all of your YouTube shorts, you keep them on brand, so to speak. You keep them related to your niche, related to your niche, however you want to pronounce it. They should ultimately relate back to you, be authentic to you and your ideal client. I love that. You know, right now, um, their Instagram reels are fairly new. How long have they been out? Like less than, less than a year. They came out yeah. in August of 2020. Yeah. So not long. And a lot of the content that you'll see, I'm just going to tell you right straight up. A lot of the content that you see there is, um, is entertainment uh, value a lot, not all of it, but a lot of it that I've seen so far, a lot of dancing, a lot of that kind of thing. Um, but I, I, I think there's a place for 
short form value, you know, short videos, like, you know, like Brock was talking about three ways to do why or two best t- uh, tools that I love and, you know, and, and then leveraging those uh, to potentially drive traffic, to get more followers. Now, this is my question to you, like um, from an entertainment value perspective, if you had, a, if you're mixing up your content, like I, I, I have a um, basically education, humor and inspiration is kind of my foundation. Um, but I'm not like, I'm not funny in the context of like normal funny. Like I just like, I'm, I like to laugh. In fact, I'm, I married my husband cause he makes me laugh every day. And I love your mom because you know, she makes me laugh every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there there's, you know, some things are like come naturally and some, some don't, I like humorous content, but to go live and like, tell a, a cat joke or whatever. Yeah. That's not probably not going to be my, in, in, you know, mm-hmm. my thing, my con, my humorous content is more uh, um, relatable content anyway. Um, so do you feel like reels are what I would call chum? So I use this fishing analogy quite a bit where I use a lot of things that are not education purpose for uh, like, you know, going back to the humor and the inspiration, those are things to attract people to my brand that relate to my sense of humor or my sense of inspiration or my faith even. So I, I call that chum. I'm jump, dumping a bunch of stuff out there, but they're not necessarily driving a business, um, but they are attracting people that are kind of attracted to my vibe. So do you feel reels have that is it the same? Like I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of calls to action on reels. So I'm just kind of trying to get clear on like that from, from that perspective. Cause yeah, I I've, totally. Yeah. So, so I love this. I love this idea of, of chum and, and you, and you know, content that is used as a way to attract people uh, to you. I think that absolutely reels are definitely a form of chum and that they do attract new audience members, new followers. They're shown to people who don't follow you. Um, and who have never seen your content before, which is a really powerful way to reach a new audience, yes. Um, But I would also say I have plenty of examples of people who are using Reels as a way to promote their business or, or, uh, you know, create, uh, you know, drive people to an opt-in page or as a lead magnet. Um, I think a great uh, case in point of this was uh, Diane Black, who is the owner of the Doodle Institute. She basically just like teaches, teaches people how to create very simple Doodle you know, how to, how to draw things. Um, and she has these little like doodle art kits and she posted two reels that weren't even selling the doodle kits. They weren't like, Hey, buy this, or here's how much it costs. They were just kind of showing people behind the scenes of how she packs them and then how she ships them, which if you think about it, it was kind of cool because people were going to get to see what goes into the box. They were getting to see the owner of the company packing the boxes and, and the love that goes into all of that. And those reels, they didn't go viral, but, you know, they did all right. They reached a couple thousand people. And from those two reels, she sold over 100 doodle kits. Over 100 people went to the link in her bio and purchased a doodle kit. So I think that's really, really powerful. You can use reels as ways to, you know, promote links and direct people to your bio and and your opt-in page. Ultimately, though, just like all other forms of content on Instagram, at least, Instagram isn't the biggest fan of you driving people away from Instagram. They're not the biggest fan of you promoting a link or or sending people off of the platform. So I think that the best way to use Reels is exactly like you said, Kim, use it as chum to get people to visit your profile, to start following you. Then once they're a part of your audience, they're a part of your, your community, then you can start to nurture them and build that relationship until Maybe you send them the link directly via direct message or you promote the link somewhere else on one of your other channels. But I think that absolutely reels are a great, a great form of chum to get your audience there. Yeah, I think so too. And I, you know, as I was, uh, I've been talking to several people who are using them and they're like, you know, given some case studies and, you know, for the, for the negative Nellies, I always feel like I have to address that. Like, well, like I get views or are worthless unless they're driving business. Right. So I always feel like I have to like have some, some qualifications there. So um, do you have like any best practices for Instagram reels? Like what's the best time to post or any, any of those like goodies that you've learned as you've been doing this yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I will say is uh, 
generally speaking, if you post during the day, you're going to be fine. I like to say if you post between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. on your Instagram reels, you're going to do generally about the same. Some people argue that you should post when your audience is peaked, a.k.a. like when the most uh, people of your followers, when the most of your followers are online, which you can view in the Instagram insights. Some people say you should post when those people are coming online so that by the time that they're online, your post is already circulating. Ultimately, though, just post the reel. Ultimately, it's it's not going to make a huge difference the different time of day that you're posting your reel, so just post it. But the actual content, my best practice, some of my best tips is start with a hook. That's the first thing. In the first three seconds, preferably, of that Instagram reel, have something that's going to hook your audience in. I like to think about it a lot like starting off a YouTube video. Hey, let me give you a crash course in 30 seconds on how to use hashtags. It's powerful. It's going to hook someone in. It's going to make them want to keep watching. Then I move on to the value. And you asked earlier about, you know, chum and value and inspiration. I like to call my reels edutainment. They're educational entertainment, They're educational entertainment. So I'm adding value usually in the, you know, the third second to the 27th second of that reel or whatever. The middle part of that reel is where I'm really adding the value. And then I'm always ending with a call to action. I think that's something that a lot of people are missing on reels when, you know, we're used to doing that on YouTube. We're used to ending a YouTube video with like and comment uh, and don't forget to subscribe. We're used to ending our, our, or we're used to during our lives saying like, hey, let me know where you're from or, or put hashtag replay if you're watching on the replay. But we're not as used to it on reels yet. So I think that you should, the same way you do on all these other kinds of content, use calls to action at the end of your reel. So the ones that I will often use is, if you found this reel valuable, please share it to your story. If you found some form of education in the last 30 seconds, press save right now. Hey, if you learned something new just now, tag someone in the comments or let me know in the comments. I'm encouraging my audience with a very specific uh, reason and a very specific way of engaging with that form of content. So absolutely calls to action at the end of the reel. Those are the, the three pieces just to recap. Start with the hook, provide some value, and then end with a call to action. And then the final thing that I will say is when you actually are sharing your reel, you're given the option to share it to the reels kind of page, which is where like all of the reels live and the feed or to just that reels page. And you should absolutely be sharing it to the reels page and the feed. Most people are still just scrolling through their primary Instagram feed and they're not going to that reels page. So definitely for at least the time being, you want to make sure to always share your reel to your feed. Hmm, so good. So, um, and should you also share it from there to your story? Yes, absolutely. Share okay. it to your story because any view that your story gets that counts as a view on the reel. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I saw some, some little, um, videos on that yesterday where you, you uh, actually reels on how you do that, do that. But, um, <coughs> sorry, quick question on, or I want, I want people to understand how powerful, and I don't think we've touched or uh, we talked about it a little bit, but not really like set it right out. But outside of the fact that you that uh, short form videos are super popular, people are consuming that content like snapping it up, you know. Um, the other real value that I want you guys to understand is the content that is reels content is not shown just to your follower base mm -hmm. on Instagram. OK, so it's kind of like the opportunity that YouTube gives us as a search engine. Um, you know, 80 some percent of people that are consuming content on YouTube are doing so because they found the video of choice in the search engine. Pinterest is a search engine. Uh, you know, you can get massive amounts of, of, of viewers to your content there and they may never follow you. It's exactly the same opportunity on Reels where you get an opportunity and I'm going to let you share what that opportunity looks like because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still learning this stuff. So, Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So I can give you just some personal anecdotes. Um, I added it up actually last night. I added it up and to date in the last maybe 10 months since Reels have released, I have 22 million views across all of my Reels. Now, that might sound crazy. That might sound like not a lot. I just crossed 100,000 followers about a week ago. Um, and actually, in the last 30 days, I've gone from 80,000 to now over 110,000 followers. So I've grown by about 30,000 followers in 30 days. 
and my focus for the last 30 days has been almost exclusively on reels. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's so freaking amazing. Like, did mm -hmm. y'all hear that? Say, th say that again. Like, yeah. that's pretty. So like in the last 30 days, yeah. you gained. In the last 30 days, I've gained 30,000 followers, really more like 33,000 followers in the last 30 days, almost exclusively from reels. Incredible. Now, mm -hmm. now I will say this caveat. He's been doing the work, y'all. He, he has for, for 10 months, he's, he, He's been working on it, but can you imagine like what your, your presence on Instagram would look like if you really committed to this mm -hmm. and uh, what, is, what happens normally with your content? I'm just curious with when you roll out a new, um, a new video and um, w w your call to action, I know is specific things, but like mm -hmm. if your call to action is, Hey, DM me, or even if it's not, I'm curious as to what is happening in your DM box. It is, it is absolutely blown up. Um, I take a lot of pride in my direct messages, and, and I've always said that I will answer the direct messages myself. If you get a direct message from me, it is actually me responding. Um, and that's what I've said for the last six years on my Instagram, and I take a lot of pride in that. That's until the last 30 days. In the last 30 days, I've gotten so many direct messages. I mean, it used to be like, you know, I'd wake up some days and I'd have five new ones. Now I wake up every morning and I have like 50 new direct messages. And if I don't check them for an hour, I have 20, 30, 40 new unread messages from people, a lot of whom who have never messaged me before. So all of this to just say, I recently hired a new assistant, a new team member who can help me with my direct messages. So it's still mostly me handling my direct messages, but I did bring in this team member to kind of help me out and help me kind of vet some of the messages. But it's been mind-blowing to see over the last 30 days the changes in my profile the changes in my business the people who are actually converting um from this you know just posting reels and following me to now actually becoming customers very very quickly um it's really cool to see the power of these short form videos yeah so cool um i you know one of the things that i think is uh super cool because i kind of watched your uh, ascension through this I didn't know all the, the numbers for sure, but uh, stunning uh, the numbers. Now, g circling back to uh, what happens, like you create a, a, a new reel, you mm -hmm. share it to the reels platform itself, also to your, pla your, uh, to your uh, profile, and then to your story. Mm -hmm. um, does it need a cover image? Do you have to create a specific cover image to make it pop in the feed? Or, um, and then I'm going to, so yeah, let, I got another question, but I, I won't tie them together because they're really unrelated. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, let's start with the cover image. So the cover mm -hmm. image, I like to add one. Um, some people are really tied to their Instagram aesthetic, which you don't have to be in. I won't go off on a whole tangent on why the whole Instagram aesthetic isn't as necessary or as, as beneficial as it once was, but you can add a cover to maybe make your reel look a little bit more presentable to grab people's attention. I like to um, add a, a cover to my reels just to make them a little bit cleaner so that when people land on my profile, they know what each of my reels is about. Um, but in terms of views, in terms of watch rates, in terms of uh, conversions or engagement, the cover that you're adding to your reel isn't, isn't too necessary. It doesn't make a huge difference. Yeah. And I've, I've seen both. So mm -hmm. I was just curious and, and you, you have to keep in mind if you decide to go with the cover um, option that, in your feed, that, that content has to be kind of, uh, you have to crop it, I guess, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. do you crop it or do you just make sure that it's in a, it's in the center kind of? Yeah, this is, this is like the ultimate confusing thing on Instagram okay. because the cover itself has to be 16 by nine, which is basically vertical format. But then Instagram will only show what's in like the center square. They recently released the ability to kind of like adjust what square is actually showing but it's still not perfect. And a lot of people have been having glitches. So the way that I like to do it is I will use like a 16 by nine photo or, or picture image, whatever, but then I'll just make sure whatever's in that center square, that's really what matters. Cause ultimately that's, what's actually going to show up on the profile. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was thinking. It would make it yeah. just the easiest. I mean, it leaves space at the top and the bottom, exactly. but I don't think it, I mean, yeah, I don't think it's yeah. a, such a big deal. Um, so in your opinion and your in experience, um, let, well, let me just give you an, a scenario. Let's say um, 
uh, Chuck, one of the we have one of our viewers today, has a new blog post, and he would like to create a reel that might drive traffic to that blog post. What would be a scenario for that? Can you just paint him a possible for us? Yeah, absolutely. So what I would do is, and I don't know if the blog post was, you know, sharing some tips or resources or education, or if it was literally just kind of recounting and retelling a story. But either way, let's condense that. Let's pull out the best parts, the best moments. If there's some education, pull out the top tips. If there's a story, let's try to condense it into a 20 second, a less than 30 second video. Let's try to make it um, into this kind of real form of content. Let's share these tips as quick as possible. Let's share this story as quick as possible. And let's just let it live like that. Let's just let it post. Let's post your reel as if it's its own piece of content. Let's see if that education or if that story that you're telling is able to do well and drive engagement on your Instagram profile and maybe even go viral, you know, and get thousands of new people following you. But ultimately, let's not use that immediate first touch point that immediate first reel as a way to direct people to the blog. Let's use that reel, like Kim said earlier, as a piece of chum to get people to your profile, to get people watching your stories, to get people following you. And then maybe on your stories, you tell people that if they want the full story or if they want the full blog or they want all of the tips, that they can go check it out on your blog. Maybe you provide a link or you tell people um, at the bottom of your caption of that reel, Hey, if you want to, if you want some more information, send me a direct message. Maybe in your blog, you gave five tips, but in the real, you're only giving three or four or three or four. And then at the end, you know, you're saying, Hey, if you want the, the, the fourth and fifth tip, shoot me a direct message. And then when they shoot you that direct message, you can send them the link to the blog. So I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't make a, make a reel that was just 100% go watch, go read or look at my blog but let's use the blog as inspiration for the reel. And then let's use the reel to point, bla- point back to the blog. So good. You know, I just had an aha moment, so I'm going to share it real quick. Mm-hmm. So I've been consuming a lot of reels content and um, I kept seeing this one person over and over again and her content really caught my eye. It was bright um, and it was all educational. You know, she mm-hmm. was and, and interesting enough. Inst- she was teaching Instagram um, and probably because that's what I was looking at. Um, it was that type of content. But um, my point is that I, every time I saw her content, I stopped and like tuned in. So maybe this would be my challenge to anybody that's considering uh, story, I mean, um, reels, is to lead purely with value without the expectation of reward, okay? Mm-hmm. Let that be your chum. And then because now what happened, I'll just share my experience because I kept seeing this girl and I kept consuming her content while I followed her. And then I went to her stories and now I'm seeing her in my feed. And so my point is that... I find that I'm I'm more, it, it's like she kept giving me good value, therefore I kept paying attention to her. So think about that in the context of how can you show up and give great value so that every time they see you, they stop and pay attention and then they start to see you in other contexts. They go to your stories, they click on your profile. Um, it's chum, it's bait, y'all, mm-hmm, it's bait. Mm-hmm. So maybe that'd be a good good way to think about it. I love that, I love that. Okay, so I know you talked about some of your um, uh, your reels being kind of being viral that you pulled over from TikTok, and that was really not a smart thing. And as you at the you thought it was at the time, but it ended up not being super mm-hmm. super smart. But can you share like something one of your t- and I have your profile pulled up here, so if you know what it is right off uh, hand, I could share it on the screen mm-hmm. so people could see it. But share like one of your top like maybe educational videos. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to, um, let me pull, hang on just a second. I'll pull your, this, your profile up here so you totally. can like direct me a little bit here. Okay. Totally. All right. So, okay. I'm, I'll go scroll back to the top and awesome. then like, just tell me one that you think. So I think that the, the, the eighth one, the one where I have my hand on my chin and I'm wearing that. Yep. That one right there. So that one has, I think it says 397. So almost 400,000 views. <laughs> That's actually true. And so it's literally a seven second video. That's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's it's seven seconds. I recorded it at the coffee shop while I was sitting there sipping my coffee and just doing some work. I propped my phone. I leaned it actually against my coffee cup 
And all it says is um, stories, views count or something like that. And then it says that's actually true. So I won't go too far into the, the background, but it's kind of a, a remix of a video that used to be popular where the end of that would say like, that's actually BS. And so this version says that's actually true. And then in the caption, I kind of expanded upon that and, and told people what we already talked about, which is how uh, views on the story count as views on the reel. I explained that. And now, mm -hmm. as you can see, it's got about 400,000 follow or 400,000 views and it's gotten me a couple thousand followers and it was super educational and it's got thousands of likes and comments. Okay, so I have a quick question for everybody and I and I need you guys to answer, okay? I'm just going to say this because I feel like when there's something new that comes our way and we haven't embraced it yet, we need to um we need to get we need to put ourselves out there with a like say we're going to do it and then it kind of holds us a little bit more accountable. It's like a commitment, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, who thinks that they could create a 6 to 7 minute video? I've said not minute, second, six to seven second video. Um, who thinks they can do that? Like, seriously, I, I think I can do it. I think yeah. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I feel like the little, the little, um, the little uh, train that could, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Deborah is saying, just do it. Um, yes. I think that's the key is, and I, every time I embrace something new, the first time I do it, the second time, 10th time, it sucks. It does not super good. Mm -hmm. So I think we got to be okay with it not being perfect. And that's really one of the reasons I haven't done it yet. Cause I didn't feel like I knew enough. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm getting ready to just try to do the imperfect model here. Um, so if there, if somebody's just starting out, we've got some commitments that yeah. they are going to go for it. If they're just starting out and they need to to go, they want to do something, but what is a first place to start? Like, is it, what would be your recommendation to the, or the all of us newbies out there mm -hmm. who are wanting to create their first reel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think what I do on a daily basis, I'll tell you that is I just look at the reels tab, which on Instagram, it's the button in the very center. It used to be the button where you would press uh, to post a new photo. It used to be a plus. Now it's the reels tab. It's just reels. So scroll through that and then just listen. And if you start to hear the same sound or the same song over and over again, that's a cue to you that, hey, that, that might be something trending. That might be something that's viral. That's, that's something that's popular. And then just see if there's a way that you could recreate that for your own industry. I just finished, Kim, I just finished a 30 Reels in 30 Days challenge. And actually today I'm starting round two of 30 Reels in 30 Days. And that's all I'm doing every single day is I'm posting a Reel and I'm posting basically a tutorial in the caption. So that's, you know, shameless plug. That's the other thing I would recommend is on my Instagram every single day, I'm sharing a Reel with a full tutorial in the caption of how you can easily recreate that Reel and how you can spin it to put your own niche or your own industry or your own perspective on that reel. So I think that's a great first step. And it's, it's honestly very quick. Like that one you just watched, it's literally like you kind of do that at the camera, like I think six times. And then you, you mouth the words. That's actually true. It's, it, it's four words and a couple little fist pumps at the camera and you're done. It's I can so, do that. Can y'all so do easy. that? Like I can do that. It's so I, easy. I, I can do it. I can do exactly. it. Exactly. Um, this is awesome. So, um, so now you guys have got a little bit more detail on reels, the opportunity that is reels. Um, like I said, I'm going to just start doing this messy here soon. Um, so I hope you've learned something super value based. Uh, we're going to be pull, uh, picking our winners here in just a moment. But I'm just curious. I always ask this question of all my guests and or I try to sometimes I forget, honestly. But what's a question that's super important that I didn't ask? This is, a, this is a great question. And you know, I think I was actually asked this question recently and I struggled to, to come up with an answer for it. Um, but I think a great question that, that we didn't really talk about today um, is like, what happens when a reel doesn't do well? Or what happens when you had a typo? Or what happens when Instagram glitches and suddenly like the text gets warped or the music doesn't quite sync up or it echoes for some reason? Ultimately, and I kind of, uh, I, I don't want to go off on too much of a rant here, but let's just focus on the next one. Let's focus on the next reel we're going to produce.
And here's the really cool thing. Here's a tangible reason that you should focus on the next one. Reels can go viral weeks after you posted them. And that's not, you know, like it happens every once in a while. It happens kind of often that reels gain views, they gain popularity days, weeks, even months after you originally posted them. So people message me, Brock, I, I posted the reel that you gave us a tutorial for today and it didn't do so well. Should I delete it? No, just leave it. Focus on the next reel. Let's, let's create two, three, four. Let's batch produce some reels so that for the rest of the week, you don't have to produce any. Let's, let's focus on the next reel and let the, the previous reel or the reel we made in the past, whether it's imperfect, whether it's the best thing we ever made, whether it flopped or it did great, let's just leave that alone. And a lot of times it will spike up in the future and it will go viral. And people tell me all the time that, Brock, I was going to delete it because it didn't do so hot. And I was kind of embarrassed because it didn't get very many likes at first. But now it's got 30,000 views and I just got 15 new followers in the last hour. So don't delete your Instagram reel no matter how poorly or how great it does. Just leave it and let's constantly be focused on the next way we're going to serve our audience. The next reel we're going to put out, the next piece of content that we're going to use to educate our audience. And you can always use this as an example of what not to do when it comes down to it, right? So that's right. why I look at it. I'm like, you know, going back to my very first tweet, uh, you know, you were talking about um, always uh, wanting to be the voice in the interaction for, you know, the, the direct connection to your community. And I had that same exact problem with Twitter back in the day. I was like, I used to get up at like, you know, four thirty, five o'clock in the morning and I'm, you know, responded to all these tweets and it just got to be too, too, too big. And, you know, then it was like, okay, somebody wants to see your first tweet, like, or your first reel or whatever, right? Just embrace the fact that, that, that they won't be perfect out the gate and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of reminds me of Pinterest too, where Pinterest content circles, you know, it can come back and have a life, you know, months down the road. So, mm -hmm. Super excited about getting started with this. I want to just give uh, a shout out to our winners. It looks like Josh and uh, Robin. Yay, Robin. I'm so glad. And Josh, that you won the DM mugs. Excellent. So if you'll just go to kimgars.com forward slash winner. Um, let me pop that up on the screen. Uh, so kimgars.com forward slash winner. Pop in your details. We'll get you guys those mugs. Um, I'm, I'm super excited uh, to be passing those on to you. Hopefully you'll get lots of good use out of them because you're going to be doing lots of reels. Um, okay. So real quick, do you want to tell everybody how they can connect with you? Um, I, over on Instagram, I saw some people asking in the comments and I know Rhonda um, responded, but still just tell everybody how they can connect with you, potentially work with you if they want to, um, et cetera. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the best place to get in contact with me is over on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Brock 11 Johnson. So the one, one is right there in the middle, Brock 11 Johnson. That's my handle across all social media. So if you want to watch some funny dancing, goofy videos over on TikTok, you can check me out there as well, but all platforms, Brock 11 Johnson, the best place to get in contact is via direct message over on Instagram. Awesome. Direct messages and more than likely you'll get him, but you might not. <laughs> so my suggestion, if you want Brock, that you send a quality message his way. Okay. That's exactly um, it. That's it. So, you know, ask a quality question or tell him you saw him over here or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. I want to, uh, I know I want to take it, um, honor Brock's time. And I'm so thankful that he uh, joined us today. Don't forget, we'll be here uh, same time next week. We're going to have uh, Annette McDonald from easel.com is going to be with us next week. We don't have a topic yet. So if you want to know something from uh, um, Annette on graphics or using easel.com, let us know because we're still in, we're still in that flex space where we can, um, we can bring her um, on and talk about anything. So Brock, thank you so much for being here. All of you guys that are with us live and watching on the replay. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention where it's always an honor. Take care of yourself.